Thank you very much, Farshad. Uh, I assume you can see everything and hear me properly. If you have any issues, just let me know. Yes, so, you're perfect. Thank you. Uh, Doug mentioned in his last talk that there are some issues with the strength activity index test. Uh, this is an attempt to devise a strength activity index test modification that works or a bulk resistivity uh, option for the strength activity index test. So, uh, ASTM C311 specifies strength activity index test. It's also specified in ASTM C618. And presumably the purpose is to screen inert and reactive materials. And what is done is that you measure the strength of a 20% fly ash or natural porcelain motor. And it should be at least 75% the value of the control at seven or 28 days. Uh, to be very, very blunt, in its current form, the strength activity index does not work. It does not actually measure any kind of reactivity. Uh, and the reason for that is, uh, there's a lot of reasons actually, and very well discussed in literature. So I'll highlight four issues. I know there are others, but we won't get into them. Uh, the first one is that the replacement level is too low. At 20% replacement level, essentially it's filler effect, which is dominating, not really reactivity. The age of testing is too low. At seven days, many class F flashes simply cannot be distinguished from inert materials because of a low degree of reaction. The W by CM value is variable uh, because of flow control. Uh, the already minor contributions of reactivity are obscured because of changes in the W by CM. And ultimately, I think the strength limit is simply too low. If the flash did nothing at all, right? If it wasn't doing bad, they would expect maybe 75 or 80 percent strength. Uh, our standard for fillers for calcium carbonate is 75 percent SAI. So why do we have such a low standard for fly ash? So essentially this doesn't work. I, a little bit of proof here, but you know, I'm not going to go into full detail. Uh, so for example, here this is 7 and 91 day compressive strength of uh, cement paste with flashes at 30% replacement level. And you can see there are some flashes at seven days that essentially have the same strength as inert materials. Now, I agree that most of the flashes and especially the class C flashes do not, but there's definitely an issue with at least, let's say three flashes here, which don't give a lot of strength at seven days. Uh, if you consider what happens with replacement, if you test something at 20% replacement at seven days, it can become very, very difficult to distinguish uh, a reactive material. This is a pumice and a limestone. There's really no difference uh, in this particular case when we're measuring compressive strength at seven days and 20% replacement. To be clear, as you increase the age and or the replacement, these differences blow up because you get a uh, reaction or more reaction. But at early ages and at low replacement levels, you simply do not see those effects. Uh, so Doug talked about a couple of reactivity tests. Maybe we can use those reactivity tests to replace the SAI. And this is a subject of a lot of research. Uh, very generally, what all SEM reaction tests do, are they take an SEM, they put calcium hydroxide there, and they also have an alkaline solution the SCM is going to react in this condition. And you can measure dissolution, heat release, bound water, calcium hydroxide consumption, strength, bulk resistivity, et cetera. All of these are measures of SCM reaction. This could be a model system. You could put cement in it. That would make it a cement paste or a cement paste similar system. Or you can also put sand in it and you can make it a mortar system. Uh, you can vary the mixture proportions, the alkaline solution composition, the temperature, the pH, et cetera. Lots and lots of such different tests exist. They are uh, of a lot of interest. There's really nice work from Stellings and Scrivener in uh, Materials and Structures in 2016. If you're interested, you should read that work. Uh, essentially, for all of them, you have to set a certain threshold. If an adequate amount of reaction occurs, then the material is an SCM, else it's not. Uh, there's Chappelle test, Fratini test, you can do PGA on cement SCM systems, R3, modified R3 test, lime strength test, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. These 
some of these tests are better than the others and some of these are standardized some of these are seeing a lot of research especially in the last five years and i put this for general interest but i won't discuss them any further in this talk because in this talk i'll take specifically the system that you use for strength activity index test and try to improve it without changing it too much so how can we fix the sai simply put the sai can be improved if either you increase the flash degree of reaction or if greater effects of reactivity can be detected this can be done as follows one use a constant w by cm considering the wide availability of plasticizers i don't know that testing at constant flow is the correct way to go i understand that measurement of flow could be important but i don't know that you need to vary the flow in the sai because that does muddle the waters use a higher replacement level uh, if you really want to differentiate inert and reactive materials you want to look at higher replacement levels 30 to 60 percent in principle you should be using later age testing uh, if if you want to see the properties of flash being manifested you should be testing at 91 days not at seven days unfortunately we are not exploring this because i talked to a bunch of folks in industry and they told me look we would prefer to test at three or seven days not any not 28 or 91 days early age testing is better simply for practical purposes so this is a valid uh, statement to test later age uh, properties but we won't be doing it here uh, and the standard way of accelerating reactions is just to increase the temperatures so test at 50 degrees it could also be 40 degrees for example but just test at a higher temperature so uh, combinations of several of these will in principle fix the strength activity index test uh, so i'm presenting results from two class of flashes one class c fly ash and two filler materials we made pace and motors at w by cm 0.40 uh, some of you will complain why did you make a motor at uh, 0.40 uh, this is a deliberate choice because choosing 0 0.485, uh, the paste is impossible to make. We wanted to make both the paste and the motors. Uh, the motors were easier to make at 0 0.40. We compared 0 0.40 and 0 0.485 for certain paste, and there was not a major difference. We tested 30 and 50% replacement levels uh, by mass. We tested 23C and 50C temperatures. We cured in lime water and we tested for 7 and 28 days duration. This is not to say that these are the right conditions. These are the, the, just the conditions that we used. I would be very interested in discussing with you other conditions that can be explored. On cement paste, we ran isothermal calorimetry and thermogravimetric analysis. On cement mortars, we ran compressive strength and bulk resistivity. With the bulk resistivity, uh, Doug has already talked a little bit about it. It's a simple, rapid test, and we think that it could be an attractive alternative to SAI. So uh, Doug in his talk mentioned that all reactive pozzolans increase the bulk resistivity. This is kind of what we have seen as well uh, for a lot of different conditions that we test in, especially, again, at later ages and at higher replacements. We show that if you use a reactive material, even a slag, not necessarily just porcelains, they increase the bulk resistivity. On the other hand, uh, inert materials decrease the bulk resistivity. In this study, the bulk resistivity is measured on lime water cured specimens, so the saturation degree remains unknown. Okay, let's take a little bit of a look at the results. So, uh, isothermal calorimetry, uh, which you know is essentially telling you a little bit about uh, the reaction uh, what this is telling you is that at 30 percent replacement these are fly ashes and filler materials maybe if you look really closely you can see a difference this is the control to me they all look the same so for all practical purposes i would say that there is very very little difference between fly ashes and inert materials at 30% replacement and 23 degrees Celsius. That's not strictly true. There are some differences, but big picture, all of these are the same. It's a completely different story if you increase the temperature to 50 degrees and you increase the replacement at 50%. So this is the cement. This is the class uh, C fly ash. This is the class F fly ash, and this is the inert materials. So clearly, 
by changing or by increasing the replacement and the temperature, you have obvious differentiation between the fly ashes, between class C and class F fly ashes, inert materials, and cement. Again, cement, class C, class F, inert materials. So uh, we either have greater degree of reaction or effects of reaction. What I mean by effects of reaction is that as you increase the replacement, the degree of reaction actually decreases. It's just that there is more of the material, so you see greater effects of the reaction. As you increase the temperature, obviously you increase the degree of reaction for the reactive materials. For the inert materials, you don't really do anything. So this provides a little bit of justification that testing at higher replacement and higher temperature actually kind of makes sense. We look at TGA, uh, again, roughly, I'm going to say that there's not much of a difference between uh, the reactive materials and the inert materials at seven days. At 28 days, there is actually a difference. You can argue whether this difference is significant or not. Again, uh, these are the flashes, these are the inert materials. I let you be the judge of how significant these differences are. But I think there's really very little question that at 50% replacement and 50 degrees Celsius, there is an obvious difference between the reactive materials and the unreactive materials. So again, I wish to emphasize, and this is really quite obvious, if you increase the temperature and the replacement, you will enhance the differences between reactive and inert materials. Let's see how this looks like in practice. Uh, if we take the strength activity index at 30% replacement and 23%, again, remember these are done at a constant W by CM. Uh, you know, this is the line of uh, the lowest uh, reactive material. This is the line of the highest inert material. There's really very little difference, right? So especially considering the variability of strength measurements. So I would say that screening is not possible at 30% replacement. At 50% replacement, you know, if you look at these, there's a little bit of difference. So the highest inert material is at about 50%. The lowest reactive material is about 60%. So there's a 10% separation. So in principle, screening is possible, but look at some of the variability in this curves, right? So screening is possible, but challenging in my opinion. At 50 degrees, uh, this is when the differences start to increase a little bit more. Uh, the best performing filler and the worst performing fly ashes show differences between 15 to 30%. So, as an example, uh, in this case, at 28 days, 30% uh, replacement and 50 degrees Celsius, the best performing filler is at about 75%, and the worst performing fly ash is about at 100%. So that's a 25% difference. Now, that is actually fairly significant, especially when compared to the standard deviation in the testing. So the first takeaway that I have is that higher temperature SAI is definitely promising. Higher replacements is also promising, but the higher temperature helps perhaps a little bit more. Doing both is obviously better. Now let's move on to the bulk resistivity. Uh, at 30% replacement or at 50% replacement and 23 degrees, there's honestly not a huge difference. Uh, actually, if you look very closely at the figures, you'll realize that when you look at strength, the issue is the class F fly ashes, which have low strength. But if you look at bulk resistivity, the issue is the class C fly ashes, which have low bulk resistivity. So maybe it makes sense to look at both of these together. Uh, but regardless, at 23 degrees, you're really not seeing very much. Maybe at... Uh, 30% replacement and 28 days is promising, but I don't see the point of changing the strength activity index test for, you know, for going for a change from 25% to 40%, right? That's not such a big change. It's really a completely different story at 50 degrees. Uh, the numbers are actually astounding. So uh, at 50 degrees, 
the inert materials show a value compared to the control of about 100%. The reactive materials show a value of about 800 to 1200% at 30% replacement and 1500 to 1300% at 50% replacement. So we are not talking about a few percent. We are actually talking about an increase in the resistivity of 10 to 20 times. So it is extremely obvious if you look at these curves that these are reactive materials and these are inert materials. Massive differences between fly ashes and inert materials at 50 degrees for just about any condition. And honestly, considering how massive these differences are, it's probable that you'll see these differences even at three days, although we have not evaluated that. So if we really want to fix the SAI, if you want to make it an extremely robust test, my suggestion is that we test the bulk resistivity and not the strength activity at 50 degrees Celsius. So it very, very effectively differentiates inert and reactive materials. And in my opinion, the bulk resistivity is really worth considering for standardization and specification. Okay, that's fantastic, Pranoy, but this is just your lab. I mean, I'm really not going to standardize something just on the basis of your results. Go write a paper. Well, that is correct. So uh, just based on one lab, I don't think I can really say anything about standardization or specification. What I would really like to do is we need to test a whole bunch of different conditions, right? Uh, we need to test 23 degrees, 40 degrees, 50 degrees. We need to see what happens in the fog room. We need to see lime water, post-dilution. We need to do more than flash. We need to test natural porcelains. We need to vary the water to cement issues from 0 0.40 to 0 0.49. Once we find a few conditions that we like, then we need to run round-robin testing on five to six labs, check for robustness, and then we can get it to ASTM. So I would really like to do this. Uh, if you are interested in helping me with this, because I think that this is valuable, uh, our funded NCHRP project provides us some support to do this. If you are interested, please do let me know either via chat or via email, and we'll get connected on how to do this. But I think there's a lot of merit in trying to run uh, modified SAI and bulk resistivity. Just to be clear, uh, I don't want to run only the bulk resistivity. I want to run also the strength activity because while I might say that the bulk resistivity is promising for standardization or specification, uh, not all producers might be willing to do something like that. And having an option saying bulk resistivity or strength activity might be extremely valuable for some producers. It could save lots of time, lots of money, et cetera. So with that, I would like to conclude my presentation. So strength activity index in its current form does not work. You can improve the strength activity index by testing at 50 degrees. Uh, if you test at 50 degrees, the strength activity is improved, but the bulk resistivity is really uh, showing massive differences between inert and reactive materials. Standardization and specification of this variant should be seriously considered. Uh, just to be clear here, uh, why I'm testing at 50 only to maximize the differences. I am not making any claim that what we measure at 50 is going to predict properties of concrete or predict durability or anything like that. That is not the purpose of this testing. Uh, the reason for these big differences uh, is definitely linked to higher reactivity, higher degree of reaction or effects of reaction. With the bulk resistivity, the reason why these differences are so massive, apart from changes in pore solution, alkali binding, I suspect is pore percolation or rather depercolation, but I don't have evidence of that at this time. Uh, either way, results from one lab don't mean very much for standardization or specification. And there's a critical need for further testing and round robin testing if these items need to get into ASTM. So please do let me know if you're interested in working on these issues. So with that, I'd like to thank my research group for all the hard work they do and NCHRP for providing the funding that uh, is helped carry out this project. And thank you to all of you for paying attention.